So let's continue syncing up our router, modem, and PC. Now this works best if you have a standard cable modem. If you're using a DSL modem, you're going to need to type in a username and a password later. But you have to do this with the setup CD anyway. If you have a DSL modem, you can still do this procedure and then make the necessary changes when we log on to the router. Now, one thing I would like to mention, if you have a DSL modem router combo, there are potential problems with connecting a router to this. Why? Because now we have one device that's functioning as a router and we're hooking up a new router which we just purchased from the store to it. When you have two routers on the same network, you generally run into problems. To avoid this, and this is a little outside the scope of this course, you're going to want to contact your internet service provider or whoever you purchased your router modem combo from and ask them how to switch it from router mode to bridge mode. Bridge mode will basically allow the router modem combo to function just as a regular cable or DSL modem. And it will leave all the special routing and DHCP functions up to the new router that you're installing. If you run a lot of games on your network, this is also a big consideration because you don't want what's called double NAT network address translation. It's difficult enough to get some games to work through a router, much less two simultaneously. Okay, so what is this trick that we can use to get our modem, our router, and our PC to make nice with each other without the use of the Easy Setup CD? By simply shutting all these devices off and then restarting them again in a certain sequence allows the auto sensing and configuration capabilities in each of these devices to do the work for us. So once all these devices are powered down, the first thing we do is to turn the modem back on. And what the modem will do is it will go off and try to connect with the ISP. The ISP and the modem will do a little dance. And once you see the cable light is solid, that means the modem has a connection to the ISP. Once we reach that point, that's when we turn the router on. As soon as we do that, we'll see the PC light come on on the modem. That means the modem recognizes that something's connected to it. After about a minute, the data light on the modem will start blinking steadily. You'll also notice the internet light on the router is either solid or blinking steadily. Once this happens, that means your modem and your router are synchronized and the router is now receiving an internet signal from the modem. Now it's time to turn on the PC. Once the PC comes on, it looks for a DTP server. Well, where's it going to find a DTP server? We have one built into our router. The router says, hey, you want an IP address? The PC says, yes, give me an IP address, and boom. We have an IP address that works on the same network as the router. Once your PC is on, you should be able to log on to the configuration website of the router. This whole process should only take about five minutes. Now, if you're using a regular cable modem and you're receiving DHCP IP addresses from your internet service provider, at this point, you should have an internet connection. If you're using a DSL service, you're going to want to log on to the router's interface and add your DSL parameters, which is typically nothing more than a username and a password to connect to your ISP. So the IP address that I want to pick up is 192.168.1.1. So we're going to restart and we're going to allow this computer to pick up the DHCP address automatically. Okay, we're back from rebooting our PC. So let's see what we have in terms of a network connection. We do this by using the IP config utility at the command prompt. So we go to start, run, cmd, and we type in ipconfig forward space all. All asks the utility to give us all its information. Hit enter. 
and we can see that we have an IP address of 192.168.1.100. Our router's IP address is 192.168.1.1. We can see it there, and we can see that our computer is on the same network as our router. This is basically what the setup CD does for us anyway. The only difference is we know what's going on. And if some sort of error were to occur, we would know where to look instead of just staring blankly at our computer screen. Now since I'm using a cable modem and do not have to type any DSL credentials, I should have an internet connection. So let's test that. Voila. We have an internet connection. Okay, well, we should be able to log on to our router now. So let's give it a shot. Now, the IP address of your router may differ from this one. It's usually something along the lines of 192.168.1.1 or 0.1 or 2.1, depending on which type of router you have. 